Okay, hey guys, what's up? Evil Zombie here. So today I'm going to be talking to you about a new item I got, the Retroid Pocket Flip. We're going to be doing a little bit of an unboxing, and yeah, I'll include a link in the description below. It's not an affiliate link, it's just a regular link, so you can go check one out yourself. Uh, the box is pretty basic. There's nothing really on the box other than nifty artwork. So there you go. Let's open that bad boy up. And I already cut the tape so that... Yeah, I already cut the tape, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, if I can grab it, we have a nice card with all the specs. Okay, so there's all the information. It has 4 gigs of LD, or is it LP DDR4 RAM. Um, this, let's see, which CPU is this? It's a phone CPU. Is this a Tiger 618, I think, CPU this one is? Uh, this one has 128 gigs of built-in storage. I also have 512 gigabyte card that I'm going to be using for this. Um, the cooling is active. So there's a fan in here. And, well, you can see it. I like that it has Bluetooth. I can use my headphones with it without needing a jack or anything. And I like that it has 5G Wi-Fi. I'm excited about that. That's going to be cool. It has Android 11, so it's not 12, but that's okay. It's fine, because I do like the way that most of the Retroid Pocket stuff feels. You know, just their operating system, it feels good to me. I like that it has fast charging, the 2 Plus does as well, so I'm, I'm used to that. And here's the basic layout of everything. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to set that farther aside. There we go. Let's see if they got the order right. The website was glitched, but customer service was very helpful with me. I just emailed them. Oh, and inside, there's no screen protector. What? Got a nice, nice cable though. Is there one under? There's no screen protector. Those dirty dogs. I have to go buy another screen protector. When I bought one screen protector for the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, they sent me three of them. And this one doesn't even come with a screen protector. I thought that was like standard for most of these things. My goodness. Okay, well, if I get it, cool. Um, I'm going to take this bad boy out. Ooh, yes, they got the color right. I was trying to get oh, I was trying to get the 16-bit um, US color because I'm a sucker for old Game Boy. Okay, so let's look at this. It actually has some decent amount of weight to it. Uh, there's a headphone jack down here. There's the power button. Uh, there's no speakers in the front. It actually is a pretty good size. This is definitely pocketable. This is about the same size as the 2 Plus. Here's the 2 Plus. Oh, it's a little smaller than a 2 Plus, and I consider this pretty pocketable except for the joysticks. Um, I have a cover coming on the way for this. But, yeah, this size comparison, you can kind of see just directly over the top of it. It's a little wider, I guess a little taller just because of the hinge. But other than that, it's very pocketable because it's flat. The buttons look like they are a little bit smaller. Ooh, with the analog. Okay, this one's clicky. The originally, like, 2 Plus had very clicky buttons. They were not analog, but they still felt good, and I've enjoyed them for games, but this is nice. These actually feel pretty good. Like, actually, I can... Oh, yeah, they feel about like my Xbox One. Okay. I have an Xbox controller over there. I felt them, too. They feel very similar to that. How about these? Those are clicky, and these are clicky um, all the way over. They're a little quieter. Wait. No, they're about the same. They're about the same uh, noise level. It has USB-C and it has, uh, I think it's a micro HDMI. There's a mini HDMI, I think it's micro HDMI. I'll look at that later. Um, but there's an HDMI port here. You can plug it into a TV if you want, which is something I do with this all the time. And I enjoy that function. So I'm definitely gonna make use of that on here with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'm excited about that. Let's open it up and look yeah, at the buttons. Oh, hold on guys. Okay, so let's open this thing up, take a look at it. I like how the word Retroid is on there. Ooh, that's a big, beautiful screen. Okay, so this opens up smooth, but I hear a lot of rumors about people cracking these, about these cracking a lot, probably because people are opening it too hard. This doesn't snap into place, it just stops. So you have to be somewhat gentle. It just opens up. Okay, it kind of um, shuts nicely from there on. This is about, oh yeah, see, it just automatically gets closed from there. But when you're opening it, it just stops there. It doesn't ever click into place, but you can definitely feel that's where it goes to. Um, I want to check out the joint on this and compare it to something like this. Okay, so it's not as far back as something like the Pal Kitty V90. 
Uh, how about compared to the DS? You can even hear that click. Like, oh yeah, and the button clickiness earlier. This is the sound. That's the click, 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 click. Okay, so these, it's basically like if you play it with the screen part way up, which it might be a little uncomfortable for some people, but I think it's fine because that's just how I kind of hold my hands. Uh, you can see the buttons are the same layout and about the same size, but higher up. Ooh, they actually feel pretty good. Then the DS, those actually feel pretty good. The joystick, DS is really clicky. Oh, wait. It's it's a rubber membrane one, I think, but it feels very similar to my Palkia DV90, which I actually really love the joystick, or not the joystick, the D-pad on. Um, like, this feels a little better because it's smoother. Here, I'm going to put that away. I have several consoles to compare. Okay, so just a button feel. Oh, yeah, and these are injection molded, so uh, the lettering won't ever wear off. It's actually part of the plastic. So if I'm running, then I can tap easy. The buttons are nice and close together. And it looks like they're a little bigger than this. Do my eyes deceive me? No, it's just the colors throwing me off. These are a little sharper. These are nice and smoother buttons. I kind of like these more. Um, these ones have always felt kind of rough. You know, like, it's hard to slide between them because they seem... I think they stick out. No, they don't even stick out higher. They're the same um, height, even, I think. Here, let me... Show us kind of a side by side so you can kind of see it. Oh, just ever so slightly lower in, just ever so slightly. Oh, yeah, and there's a volume rocker over here. <laughs> and joystick on this one are, of course, higher. This is like the DS, uh, sorry, the 3DS. Um, these are HAL th th thumbsticks. These are the rocker sticks. These aren't, um, what's it called? These aren't regular joysticks. These aren't like the Switch ones. Those are those rocker style ones, much like this, but much higher quality. Like, oh, that's not that's not even close. This feels good. This is terrible. I hate this little joystick. I never use any shooter games on this because of this. This joystick is not good. Hold on, guys. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah, I just went and got my uh, five twelve gigabyte um, stick here, my little flash drive, whatever it's called. Mini uh, micro SD card, that's it. But yeah, the buttons all on this actually feel really good. Those are those are clicky. These actually press in similar to how the Game Boy felt. Mm, it's close, but not quite. This feels better. I do love the buttons on this. These are a little smaller, of course. I think it's just a tiny bit closer together. This D-pad... Uh, the pressing down the rubber membrane feels good on it, but it's a sharper one. So after a few hours, you might get hurt. you might get sore fingers if you have delicate fingers. This is definitely easier if you have bigger hands. This is nice, and these are nice and rounded, much like most Nintendo systems. Um, the D-pad on this, I always felt was like too low. I like how this one's a little higher. I've never I've never liked the uh, swap positions here. This one's always been a sharp D-pad, though, and it's not the best feeling, but it's accurate. This one's more clicky as well. I kind of like that rubber membrane, the non-clicky D-pad. It feels more like a Super Nintendo. This is a really good feeling D-pad. It's better quality than this one, even, and I've been using this for, like, Metroid, Mario, all kinds of games. I use a D-pad more than anything on this, so a lot of times I'm playing like that. And that just kind of wears it, because you're supposed to play like this. It feels more comfortable, but I've been doing that my thumb down. Um, it's just going to feel better overall like this. For most old school games, I end up turning to this little guy, um, which also has these inline buttons that nobody likes, but it feels kind of cramped. If you have a bigger hand, you can't really hold it close. You have to kind of have a claw grip for it because it's so tiny, you know? Look how big the screen is compared to that sucker. What? What? <laughs> That's so crazy, the difference. Wow. Even the buttons even feel good compared to my game sir. This is my game sir uh, X2. So compared to the game sir X2, these do have nice joysticks and all that. These are the Switch joysticks, but the buttons are all clicky. These are very tactile. It's good for in a pinch, but this feels really good. I love the buttons. Okay, moving on. How do they feel compared to a classic like the original Game Boy? 
actually this is still pretty tops this these feel really good like nintendo really nailed it with the game boy but i think the d-pad this is still kind of a clicky d-pad it's nice and rounded much like this one it feels good even though there is that texture on here but this is still kind of a clicky and it, you can definitely hear that sucker here yeah no it's definitely audible and the bigger buttons are nice but they're still they still make some noise you can switch back and forth if you want and of course gigantic battery pack yes yeah, last game I was playing was Metroid 2 I love Metroid 2 I love Metroid 2 it's so good on my what's it called on this one well I've been playing uh, Metroid Zero Mission and I like it it's fun okay so moving on and of course you all remember this which has tiny little buttons and a tiny little d-pad which surprisingly felt good somehow I don't know how but they managed it and of course it just flat out beats this guy <laughs> Nobody liked these. The buttons feel terrible. The screen looked terrible, but we had it and it worked. Okay, moving back on to this guy. I'm going to um, get this. We'll go through the initial setup and then I'll play around with it a little bit and we'll get back to the video after I have everything optimized. Where is my... Oh, there it is. Okay, guys, so now I've set up all the software. I've had it going for a couple days now. And yeah, so I gotta say, I love this thing. <laughs> it has become my daily driver. It is in my pocket always. Um, so it does just slide into the pocket nice and easily. Um, the two parts over here are this, here actually. These are the speakers over here. I think this is an air intake because this is the, the fan, there's a fan in here for the active cooling. It's not just passive cooling like on the three plus and the three and the two plus. Those are all passive cooling, you know? Okay, uh, here, let me go out of this. I did change a few of my settings from the default. You know how before you normally just have gestures? Uh, to make some things work better for games, you're going to want to have the actual buttons that auto-hide. That'll just make it easier. Then you can go through and close out apps if you want after also. But the easier thing is having a back button. Because a lot of emulators, if you don't have a button on the screen, if you want to hide the interface that they have on the screen, then you use the back button for the menu. And that makes it easy. These I really don't use like almost ever because you can't map them in everything. Some things you can map them with. It's kind of a hit or miss, those two buttons. Um, they come in handy every once in a while. It depends on the emulator you're using because then you can go like menu with it, you know. But other than that, there's not much you can do with it. Um, I, I did organize my setup like, oh, I forgot to drag that one over. I'll just show you right now. Let's see, that one I did as a launcher because it's RetroArch. I count RetroArch as pretty much a launcher. But I have my collection of launchers, and I have my collection of emulators, and then I have just some individual games that I like in separate folders so that I can just find them all easy, and then all the random tools, and then my most used things all over here. Um, there are some launchers that work better than others, of course. You do have the default Retroid launcher, the Retroid Pocket launcher. It's It's okay. It's um, about the same as it was in the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. It feels about the same. You can either navigate it using the controller. I haven't organized it yet. Um, I will do that later. But if I wanted to, I can just hold, drag, and then slide it over. You know, it's an easy thing to organize. Um, you just look at the list of things, and then you go into one of the categories. You can do it with the controller or your hands. If you do it with your fingers, it's a little faster because you can just kind of scroll. It automatically scrapes the artwork. Let's see, my camera is really out of focus. Am I supposed to? Oh, it's clearer than it looks on the camera. <laughs> but yeah, it's easy to just go through and pick things out. You just select it and then you jump in. So that's the gist of what the entire, um, oh yeah, and you have a favorites list, which is pretty nice. So if you actually go through and select your favorites, you can have them show up in there. So that's the gist of the Retroid launcher. That's basically, oh wait, this one you can't just close it like a normal app. You have to do, go, do it through the close the quit function. And there's two other launchers I use right now in this one. I also normally use Reset Collection, but I haven't done it on this one because I... Oh, wait, no, I do have Reset Collection in here. I just haven't set it up. Um, and I don't use Retro Arc by itself. I use it as a back end. First, I'll show you Dig because Dig is amazing. I love Dig. Okay, 
So here's Dig. It first shows up like this. You can change the theme and stuff, which is what I did. And this is this is just a cool theme. I love this theme. Because you can make it look kind of like an emulation station. If it doesn't have artwork for one of the items, it just looks like that. Which is no, no big problem, because the rest of it just looks awesome. And then it shows each game like that. It's all in like a wheel style. And I don't know, I like it. It looks very pretty. It looks very appealing. It looks good. It feels good. It, it's dig. It does dig things. And I can just hide that if I want to have a full screen experience. It's fine. Yeah. And if you want to close it, you just swipe up. It's nice and easy. If you want to have a Daiji show, is probably the best, most well optimized one. Of all these, it starts out, um, of course, with your thing on the system, but you just go down and you can scroll between them, or you can do it with the tabs that or the triggers for scrolling, going back and forth between those. So these are for scrolling. Oh, hold on, guys. There we go. Sorry about that. Life needed me. Okay, so, but yeah, um, you can do different. Not themes. You can do different posters or wallpaper. You can do different brightness levels. Um, like dark mode, light mode, but you can change your wallpapers for this mode, and it's pretty easy to do. I, I like this one because it has all the little systems, like ColecoVision actually has artwork for ColecoVision instead of you having to use the default. It actually has one for Atari ST, which is amazing because not, none of the other ones really do. I've even found some that didn't even have it for, Atar for any of these older systems. Well, 3DS isn't really an older system, 2600. But I do like the artwork. It looks cool. It looks nice and spiffy. But if you go into settings, you just go down to appearance, and then you can download a wallpaper pack, and you select the one you want. And then it will just automatically set it up with the new wallpapers. So, Di so Daiji Show can look slightly different. Um, you can kind of change the coist mode and how things look. You know, it's, it's pretty nice. You can adjust things a little bit, you know? It's not too bad. I, I enjoy it a bit. Um, there's also the widgets. You can make shortcuts to specific ones. It's pretty easy to. Like I did for the SP SCP Breach 2D and Mighty Doom. I'll show you on here how to do it. So you just do new widget and app shortcut. Let's see. And then pick an item. And then you can pick one of your apps. So if I want to do oh sir the insult simulator there it is. So Daiji Show still has the most functionality. It just works. It also did a great job in finding all of my ROMs. So you just click on that and then you can change your emulator also over here if you want to. I'm gonna go out. I think I just touched something. It's fine. But yeah you can also do paths and you can add more paths if you wanted to go um, add a new folder or if you change your folder that's where you press sync and it will scan for new ROMs and it will automatically do the artwork with it which is pretty cool like if I'm in here it gives me the artwork I have the artwork already in this view and I I enjoy that you can click on details and you can get more information on your games of course it gives you all the little goodies so that's when I've been doing a lot I've been doing a lot of Metroid Zero Mission now this is one I I really love Game Boy Advance on this. It looks fantastic, and the speakers are actually really good on this. Hold on, here. See? I know they're on the bottom, but it still sounds good. Cause they sit in your hands, and it kind of gives a little more bass when they're going off of your hands and back up. But. With a with the Game Boy Advance, it really does take up a good amount of screen. Like you don't really notice the bezels at all. It's nice. I don't know. It it just feels right when you're playing it. Probably because it's not sitting between your hands. I'm not really sure, but it feels good. It feels right. There. See, so you just swipe. People complain about not having a home button, but I really I'm used to Android. It works fine for me. And some some consoles you can do widescreen hacks, and some consoles do look better than others um, when they're stretched, or when, and then you do widescreen hack for it, or when they're just default native resolution. Like I enjoy the Game Boy at its native resolution personally. 
and I just do bezels on here that make it look like a Game Boy screen, kind of. And then you can change your settings and stuff to make it, I don't know, just feel a little more retro-ish. Which is the best way to kind of describe it, I guess. Retro-ish. Boring. I love, I love Donkey Kong. Hi, Diddy. Good stuff. Um, I set it up where it can copy the, what's it called? The ghosting and everything. It all looks pretty legit. And it's on a gigantic screen. Like, and it sounds good. The music actually sounds really good here. It actually sounds really nice. But this is compared to this size screen. Look how much of an improvement. <laughs> this is my old clamshell device. And you can see the unavoidable bezel black mark across it. Even though there are bezels in the front, it's still, you don't really notice it that much. They work. There. And when I want to close out all of it, I just do this. It's fine. I can do internet browsing and type on the screen. And apparently you can't, oh yeah, and I haven't done much with these. I mostly play games with D-pad, but these work fine. I've been doing it, and you can navigate everything with those as well if you like. But um, I mostly just do D-pad because I do a lot of older games. But GameCube and PlayStation and stuff like that work fine with this. Something that was surprising to me. Let me find the game. Something that was surprising to me was it actually does play the games I would play personally on a PS2 just fine. Oh yeah, PSP looks great on here as well. But it plays PS2 just fine. I was playing, I let's see, I just started uh, up Silent Hill 2 just to see what it would look like. And it runs perfect. Everyone was like, oh, don't get this for PS2. It's going to go so slow and it's not going to be playable. I don't know what they're talking about. What are they smoking? It, it plays just fine. Every GameCube game I've thrown at it plays perfectly fine. And it's all, if you ever have slowdown, it's hardly slowdown. It's barely any. It's fine. Like, it actually works unless you're doing Gran Turismo or a very high-demand racing game, you know? I don't have my glasses. Okay. Yeah, no, no. And I do this at this aspect ratio um, just because that's the original look. It feels good. I'm just going to jump in so you guys can kind of see that it actually does just work. I'm just going to kind of skip all the stuff. But everything looks looks great on it. I haven't noticed like any slowdown at all. That's a video. It doesn't really count that much to pass it. See, it just, it looks great. It feels good. There's like no slowdown. I even watched the frame rate for a bit and it, it was fine. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. Back then you couldn't just flip around. I'm kind of looking at it through the thing recording, so like the camera recording, so it's kind of I'm looking back and forth, so my, my controlling is terrible. But I think in graphics, it looks fine, it looks good. That's the best word I could describe it with. It looks fine, there's no problems here. Look at this, I'm going at full speed, there's no issues. If you're playing something that has any kind of pre-rendered backgrounds, it's going to work great. If you're doing a game, let's see, I also played, there, I'll just go out of it. Earlier I also did uh, Gundam Battle Assault 3 and it worked great. I had no slowdowns, it was just fun. I mean, I'm terrible at the game, but it worked for me. So, yeah, you guys don't need to listen to all the jabber about people saying, oh, it's no good at this. No, it handles it. it. It's just a little slower than you'd want if you're playing a really high-demand game. There's, like, what, a few of those out there. You're going to play God of War, it's not going to work that well. But if you're playing something like Evil Dead Regeneration or Fistful of Boomsticks, it's going to work perfectly fine. Um, I haven't done DBZ Budokai Tenkaichi 3 yet. I will because I love that game. So I'm going to jump into that one sometime. But... Other than that, everything works good. I have no problem with it. Um, as far as comfort goes and everything, I actually really like the comfort. It feels good. This feels like a nice system. You know, it feels, I don't know, it just feels natural the way I hold it. 
and I really haven't noticed any difference when I go down here and mess with it. They're all very reachable for me. I kind of wish there was something right here, but I might like print out a sticker and do like a logo right here for myself, Evil Zombie, you know? I don't know. It gives me free real estate to do something cool there, which I will. I will do something cool. Maybe I'll put a picture of my anime waifu Chi-Chi from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I'll put a picture of Chi-Chi right there. I actually think I have it somewhere over here. It's okay. Oh, wait. Actually, nope, that's Bulma. Never mind. Never mind. My wife is like the human embodiment of Chi-Chi. It's fantastic. <laughs> but anyways, guys, the buttons, they felt great. The D-pad actually feels really good. It's much bigger than like the standard DS or DSi. Uh, what's it called? D-pads. These are the DS. Sorry, the 3DS. Um, the new 3DS. Uh, it's called the HAL sensor. What are they called? The rocker joysticks? They're not regular joysticks. Sliders. That's it. They're not rockers. They're sliders. They actually feel really good. They're very fluid. And they actually go all the way around. The ones from the 2 Plus, those ones definitely felt like you were trapped inside an octagon because it was like click, 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 click. And you could feel it. It was jerky. But this, no, it feels good. And I probably won't get a screen protector for this because I hear that these like almost rest on the screen. Like just barely below it you know when you close it um so i'm probably so i'm probably just going to keep it clean wipe it and just use the interface mostly with buttons if i can now i'm just always going to try and remind myself because of what everyone says and from what i hear online the cracking that most people get i have not gotten it is you just open it up touching the middle don't a lot of people have cracked it by opening it from the sides and it just puts an odd amount of pressure on it and that ends up cracking this because they didn't make it, well, the joint, the hinge, they didn't make that well. But it works fine for me. I haven't had any issues. And you just are careful how you open it. You'll, you don't hyperextend it. You just feel carefully for when it stops, and you're fine. It's good. So, my thoughts on this, I love it. <laughs> it's definitely worth it. It's definitely good at its price. If you, um, I think it was like 160 or something like that. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's great for gaming. It's good for all of my survival horror needs because that's my most played thing, survival horror. <laughs> I love survival horror. I play all the Resident Evils. I play Silent Hills, Fatal Frame, Siren. Siren, it, go, it might get a little slow on. I haven't tried it with Siren yet. I know that one was a harder to emulate game on the computer before, so it might be tough. I haven't checked that one out on here yet. So I'll let you guys know. Maybe I'll run a few games on here and then just do the do videos show, showcasing how different things run. So let me know if you guys are interested in something like that. If you want to see different comparisons with how well it runs things compared to other systems. Yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. But I am definitely going to be using this like all the time. The battery life is actually really good. Like they say it's what, like six hours or so battery life, but... So I had it going for a couple days and it didn't die at all. And I'm having fun. It plays all the games I want it to play. A little bit of an issue is it can't, it can, you can't really see it. It can kind of be a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. Like I can see when I have fingerprints on there and I can always have to kind of wipe it. Like in here, you always see fingerprints on the surface. Um, that's not that bad. And yes, I know I just touched it in the wrong spot. It's a natural position you feel like you're supposed to do it so i just need to retrain myself a little bit oh yeah and this works great it goes up at 16 by 9 and it feel and it feels good it's a nice um display it doesn't really slow down at all this depends on the type of cable the quality of cable that you have so just get um was it, two hdmi 2.1 certified one and then you're fine it'll be good Okay, so guys, thanks for watching. I'll include links in the description below. If it ever goes up on Amazon, I'll post links in there as well. Um, those ones will be affiliate, but I'll post the Retroid link and then the AliExpress link if they have it. I'll just post links to wherever you find this thing. So, see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.